Hey, it's Prakash, and today we're going to talk about how to connect to an external API or an external service and bring that data into Xano so you can do something with it. We'll connect to uh, an API that doesn't have any authentication, so it makes it really easy to just connect and get the data, and then we'll connect to a more complex one and manipulate it a little bit. So in order to do this, I'm just going to click uh, Add an API Endpoint. You can do this in any API Endpoint, but I'm going to create a new one for this example. Uh, I'll start from scratch over here, and I'm just going to say uh, External uh, API. Okay, and I'll leave it as a get command. So this is our no code API builder. In the function stack, I'm gonna add a simple function and I'm going to do an external API request, okay? So this is our external API request function. You could uh, fill all of this out uh, manually, um, but the only thing that I'm gonna need for my first example is just the URL. We're gonna use the Zipopotamus API and this basically allows you to uh, uh, access their API and pull in the country and a given zip code, and they're going to give you information about the city. So I can literally just take this, right? I can paste it over here in this URL, and then I can save it. And so now when I run and debug this, I should be getting back that uh, result from 90210 which it says is Beverly Hills, okay? So that's pretty cool. But, you know, I think that one, uh, if someone were to see this, they're probably going to want to say, hey, listen, I don't want to hard code the, uh, the country and the zip code. I want the user to be able to enter it in. So I'm going to show you a cool filter called Sprint F. The first thing that we want to do is define the country and the zip code as inputs from the user. So we're going to hit this button over here. We're going to say, I want to take in the country from the user. I'll just as type text. And then the zip code as well, which I could do as an uh, uh, integer as well, but I'll just do it as text. That doesn't matter. So we're taking in a country and a zip code from the, the user, and then we want to replace it instead of hard coding the URL here. So I'm just going to basically replace this with percent %s and percent %s again. And then I'm going to hit Add Filter and we can go sprint F, okay? So the cool thing is the arguments happen in order. Um, so the first uh, percent S is a country. So instead, I could hard code something here, right? But instead, I'm gonna go to input and I'm gonna select the country, that input from the user over here. And then the second one is I'm going to do the zip code. So now when I update it and I'm gonna say save, uh, and I run this again, it's now going to ask me for a country and zip code. So the country, I'm still going to do US. Zip code, this time I'm going to do 92352, which I know is Lake Arrowhead. So when I run this, you can see status OK, 200. It's returning as Lake Arrowhead. So pretty cool. Um, we'll show in the next example how you can just get certain pieces of the response that you want, but we're also going to use a more complex example. So this one was using a completely open API. Anyone could access it, but more likely you're going to connect to APIs that require some sort of authentication or token to map who you are with the API usage. So for this next example, we're going to use open API. If you don't know what it is, it's Google's artificial intelligence uh, API that allows you to leverage their uh, AI engine to uh, do whatever you want in your application. So for this example, they have an example uh, of summarizing for a second grader, right? So you provide a long piece of text and they will break it down using their AI to something that a second grader can understand. So most API endpoints out there, if you scroll and you look uh, at the documentation, they almost always have a curl command, right? It's a command line URL that uh, articulates every single part of executing this API endpoint successfully. So I'm going to copy the curl command because the cool thing about Xano is we actually have a way to import curl. So the first thing I want to do is I don't need these inputs anymore. I'm just going to get rid of them. So I'll get rid of those two things and then I'll get rid of this function and let me go ahead and do a new one. I'm going to go function stack external API request and we have import curl. So when I import the curl over here, if this works properly, it will explode out all of the different elements of this external API request, right? So you can see the prompt, right? If I click over here, the value is exactly what um, the prompt is over here. And then the sample response is what I should get back if I run it. 
One thing that you'll note is that if I scroll down, it's going to be asking me in the headers for an authorization bearer token. Almost all external APIs ask you for this. So you're gonna need to basically have this key. So I have one at my disposal because I signed up for um, Google's Open API. So let me go ahead and enter it here. Um, it's this one. So now I hit this. I hit update. And by the way, it's best practice that you store this in your environment variables, which is in settings. So it's not hard coded in the API and you can use it over and over, but I just hard coded it for this example. So when I click save and I click run um, and I run this, I should in theory get back this shortened response. Okay. So let's scroll down. I can see status 200. That's a good thing. And here is the shortened response. So as I mentioned before, I want to show you what if you just want to return this shortened response, this summary, and not all of the entire payload. Well, there's a cool way to do this within Xano. So I'm going to copy the result of what I'm getting here, right? And then back in my function stack, I'm going to add a new function. I'm going to go to data manipulation, and I'm going to create a variable. A variable is like a container for basically anything that you want. I'm just going to call this variable summary, right? And in the value, I'm going to select API 1. Uh, API 1 is right over here. So we call that external API and all the results are being stored in API 1. And then I click this thing called subpath. Subpath allows me to paste in a response and then traverse that response to get exactly what I want. So I'm going down to the choices and I can see that the text here is the only thing that says Jupiter. So that's probably the summary. I'm going to go ahead and click that and you can see it automatically does the dot notation and gets back exactly what I need. So I'm going to click save. And instead of returning the, the entire payload from API one, I'm just going to return summary over here. So I'm going to change this to summary. And so if I've done this right, and if I execute it again, I should see that I'm only getting back that shortened summary um, from uh, the open API example. So if I wanted to then, instead of that hard-coded text in the API over here, right? If I wanted to replace this what the, with what the user inputted, no problem. I could just add an input right over here. Uh, I'll just call this um, user text and I'll hit save. And um, so now it's gonna ask for user text. And what I wanna do is instead of this hard-coded value that came from the curl command, I'm just going to uh, get rid of that. I'll click input and I'll select the user text. Okay, pretty straightforward. So I'm going to hit save. And now when I run it, it's going to ask me for, uh, for some text from the user. Um, I'm just going to go to, let's go to a new site, cnn.com. And uh, there's, sure. Okay, so then let's go ahead and take, uh, I guess we'll take this, this blizzard warning paragraph. Um, if I go back to Xano and I type it in that uh, user text over here and I hit run, it now breaks it down to what uh, Open API thinks is the uh, summary for a second grader. So you can see how flexible and easy it is to not only call an external API or an external service, but bring in that data and manipulate it within Xano. So stay tuned for more videos like this, and thank you so much for watching.